Welcome to the MLTI Slam Show. I'm Jared, and today is Thursday, January 19th. In the MLTI Slam Show, we learn from students just like you from all over me. And we'll begin today by following along with Alex Grant from the Comus, who will teach us about photo editing, where you can use Google Photos to store, edit, and share photos. Then viewers can take the Slam exam a chance to win prizes by answering questions about the show. Then, of course, we'll wrap up the show with the Slam demo, uh, cray Crayon, which uh, is a free AI generated artwork creator. Now, please mute your mic and if you have questions, enter them in the chat so Owen, our moderator, can respond during the show. And remember, your account is connected to everything you type, so be kind and have fun. Now, welcome, Alex. Glad you could join us. What do you have to share with us today? Hey, everyone. I'm Alex. I go to Nokomis Regional High. I am a junior here. And today, I'm going to be uh, showing everyone how to use Google Photos. So, I'm just going to present my screen here. Just give me a second. So once you are on whatever device you're using, computer, uh, computer preferably, you're going to want to go to Google Photos. And that is photos.google.com. And today we're going to be editing this picture, uh, wood flower with model. So it's just this little wooden statue with a flower in its hand, something, something simple, um, but it will but yet it will be effective for the presentation today. So once you are in Google Photos, you want to go to upload and upload whatever photo that you want to edit from your computer. So if I go into my documents here, it's wood model wood flower. And then I can open it and one item is uploaded into Google Photos, as you can see right here. So now once you're here, you want to click on the photo and up in this top left corner or top right corner, there's edit, zoom, info, favorite, delete, uh, and uh, the three dots, which drops down to download, download the original, uh, but we'll get more into that at the end of the presentation. So for now, we want to click on the edit button in the top right corner, and it will pop up this drop down with all these different filters, um, a little more in-depth editing, but right now we just want to go to crop over on the right. So over on the right of this picture, you have this little scroll wheel. What you want to do if you want to edit it or turn it in any direction, you just want to click and you can scroll up or down. And as you can see, it's just, it keeps turning. It goes to negative 45 degrees and 45 degrees in both directions. Uh, but for this, we're just going to keep it at zero. But uh, I just showed you just in case you do want to crop something. Uh, if you want to kind of more focus more on the uh, like centerpiece of the photo, you can drag these and it will make it smaller uh, and it will just kind of focus on a smaller space where you want to focus. So that's like kind of the outline of the statue. Uh, so we'll do that for today. And now once you're done cropping, you just want to hit done and it will bring you back down to this drop down. Um, and now once we're here, you have all these filters. So we're just going to test a few, few of them out. So. I can't pronounce half of these because Google just have some has some funny names. But uh, so this is Metro. Uh, it just kind of makes everything a little brighter. Honey just kind of saturates a little more. Playa just uh, kind of brightens it up, makes the flower pop a little more. But for this, we want to go to automatic right here, and it will just do an automatic filter. And then now, once we're on automatic, we want to go to these three editing sliders that you can see called basic adjustments. And as you can see, you have light, color, and pop. And under light and color, you have two drop down menus that get more in depth. So for light, for example, if we open it up and we wanted to change the exposure, if you dropped it down, it kind of makes it darker, kind of uh, fades the picture away a little more. If you make it brighter, it gets, uh, or slide it to the right, it makes it a lot more bright. Um, and just kind of mucks up the picture a little bit. In the, in this case, sometimes the exposure is good, sometimes the exposure is bad. So for this, we're just going to lower it a little bit just to kind of um, focus on the statue a little more. And then we have contrast right below, and that just uh, like makes the colors pop a little more, makes them really stand out different from each other. So we want to slide for this. We kind of want the flower to pop out just because it's, it's sort of the centerpiece of this photo and it's the brightest thing. Uh, in the photo. So we just kind of want that to stand out. So we'll slide it right about there. 
And now right under contrast, you have highlights. Highlights uh, just highlight uh, like the surrounding of it. So, and it and the actual statue itself, it just kind of gets more in depth as you can see uh, in some of the wood, you can see some of the marks marks on it that it has right on the head here or right on the leg and the knees and stuff. Uh, so you can do whatever you want. You can highlight it. I'm personally going to highlight it a little bit more just to kind of make it pop out. And now under highlights, you have shadows. Shadows just really emphasize like the dark, the darkness uh, in the photo and like really, really just give it some shadow as the name says. So again, to focus in on the flower a little more, we just want to have the shadow a, a little bit to the left. Nothing, nothing too major to take away from the overall color of the picture. Uh, and now under you have whites, and that really emphasizes uh, the bright colors in this picture. So we want to again keep it keep it bright, keep keep the flower bright. Um, so we'll just kind of put it right there. How's that sound? And now blacks again. This is this is the other way around. It focuses on the darker uh, the darker pieces of this photo. Uh, so again, like if it's all the way on the left, uh, it will be a lighter photo. All the way on the right, it will be kind of a darker photo. And again, we just want we want to keep the flower uh, bright and like kind of the center piece here. So we're not going to adjust that too much, maybe a little black. So now at the bottom, it's Vignette. And that just, uh, see, as you can see on the uh, border of the picture here, um, it will shadow it and make it darker and kind of like really just zone right in on the center of the picture. Um, so this kind of makes it darker, kind of takes away from the surroundings. Uh, but we don't really want to take away from the surroundings, uh, just again, because we did crop it. There's less um, actual actual like material in this picture. So we just want to, we'll shade it a little bit, just so if you want to shade it, this is how you do it in Vignette. So we'll shade it a little bit, like right to there. So those are the, those, those are the light settings. And again, you can, the light uh, bar up top, corresponds with the white. So the light really, when you do adjust just the light is adjusting uh, the whites uh, slider. So now if we wanna go to color, again, color is uh, the saturation and the skin tone and deep blue primarily, uh, but we'll go into the specifics here. So saturation, again, just like really makes it pop. So we want, the, again, the flower to pop. So we uh, wanna saturate this a lot and really give it a lot of color. And then warmth, again, we don't really want to play with this too much. In in this case, you can if you want. Uh, but if if you want to make it a little like cooler, like say it's a winter scene or some winter photo, and you really want to give it like that, like winter effect, then then uh, toning down the warmth would would be a good option. Or if it's like a summer scene and you want to really bring out like the bright colors, then something uh, along the lines of warming the picture up would be good. But we don't want to do anything too major, so we'll just leave it where it is. And tint again. This will this will tint the picture and change a different color. So all the way to the right is pink. Uh, that kind of, kind of takes away from the flower a little bit. Again, so uh, we won't be using too much tint. And then green just kind of takes away from the from the wooden statue. So we'll we'll keep tint at the same. But if you do want to tint it a little bit, either pink uh, really highlight kind of the pink colors, uh, or brighter colors, or if you want to um, go into the green colors, like if it's a forest scene and you want to tint it and really just make it look really, really green, then this is how you do it. Uh, so now down right down below, it's skin tone. Just uh, again, skin, it just brightens it up uh, on the right and then makes it a little less bright on the left. Uh, we want this a little brighter again to to make the flower pop. Uh, and and in the, in the wall behind it is yellow, so that will obviously light up. So that gives it a little bit of contrast too. And now deep blue, there aren't really any sort of like blues in this picture. So uh, this really won't change much in this picture. But uh, if you want to emphasize blue again, like this, like this was green and pink, and then this was like blue and yellow. So, so the kind of uh, middle ground would, would be just be blue again. Um, so this will, this is how you change the blues and stuff. So we're just going to leave it right now. So those are the specifics for highlight or for light and color. Um, and then you have this drop down menu at the bottom or this pop up at the bottom called pop. And this just makes like the small details stand out. Like again, the wood, the, the markings in the wood, the bottom of the flower, the petals in the flower, like it just really makes it stand out. And if we did that, like again, and put it all the way to the left, uh, you see at the bottom here, 
you can't really tell the contrast between like the stem of the flower and the actual petals of the flower. And the same with the wood, you can't really tell uh, like the contrast and like the different marks. So we want this one to pop a lot just to really get in depth, but not not too too much where it's like overwhelming. So we'll we'll put it right there. So now once uh, you're done editing and everything, you want to clip. Sorry, we'll, we'll go back a little bit first. So. If you want to compare the original photo to what you have now, all you have to do is click and hold to compare, like it says right at the top of the screen. So if you hold, so that's the original photo. Photo. So that looks very different than what we have now. Um, as you can see, the flower pops out way more. Um, there's more contrast between the wood and the wall and the stands and the uh, black and the black table that was on. Um, so it just really makes it pop and kind of makes it a little more appealing uh, to your eyes. Uh, so now, once we're done editing, you just want to click Done. And it will bring you back to this, this page right here. And again, this is called, this is, uh, the technical definition is called non-destructive editing. So you can still download the original uh, if you so please. So if you click on the three buttons up in, or the three dots in the right hand corner click on it it will give this drop down menu so we want to download this so we'll download it and then if we want to download the original but we already have it have the original so we don't need to download it again so now um yeah i'm just gonna throw it back to you jared that that's all i have for you today um but yeah thank you for having me all right, now if you find this presentation difficult to follow, remember you can always access these recordings at www.mlti.me to play, pause, and rewind. Now we're going to check in with Owen, our moderator, to see if there are any questions in the chat. It looks like we do have one question here. It is, how do you change the warmth of your picture? So, uh, Alex, could you go ahead and take that question for us? Sure thing. Yeah, so I'm just going to present my screen one more time and go back to my Google Photos tab. So once you're in Google Photos, again, you want to click on your picture. And up in the top right, you have the three edit sliders. And you just want to click on Edit. And again, just go to Basic Adjustments and drop down Color, uh, which is the bot, the second, or right in the middle of Pop, Color, and Light. And then right here on this Warmth slider, you can either drag it to the right, and it makes it warmer and more yellow um and brighter or you can drag it to the left and it kind of makes it blue and kind of makes uh, the darker colors stand out a little more but yeah that's how you change the warmth all right and thank you alex for coming on the show and teaching us about google photos now slammers get ready to click the link in the chat to take the slam exam a one question quiz about today's show topic you will have until next episode to answer the question and be entered in the prize drawing only your first entry will count and the others will be removed then we'll announce the winner in the next episode. That way, everyone has a chance to take the slam exam, even if you're not able to join us live. I will give you a code for you to type in so everyone has the same amount of time. And the slam exam question from last episode was, how many pixels are in the Sphero matrix? Was it 16, 32, or 64? And the correct answer was 64. Now, our winner is MR from Central Middle School. So congratulations. The slam team will reach out to you to get that prize. Um, so be sure to be checking your email. Now, before we ask this week's slam exam question, let's check out this week's slam demo. Hello, my name is Alex, and for this episode's slam demo, we're going to explore artificial intelligence or AI. There's a lot of buzz about artificial intelligence lately and what it can do. The definition of AI is computer systems that can mimic problem solving capabilities like making an image from scratch. To try it out, let's visit crayon.com. It's crayon, but with AI in the middle. This is a free version of the Dolly AI system, so it's not as polished as the official version, but a great tool to visualize ideas you might have. Note there are ads on the sides, and it's not super fast. So, let's say you're writing a story about a dog in the forest wearing a top hat. Enter that prompt in a crayon, and here are the results. You can download them or try again. Now, this wouldn't replace your work as an artist, but could give you some ideas to start with. All right.
right, and thanks for the information about that, Alex. Now, let's get ready for the SLAM exam. Our moderator will put the link in the chat, or if you're not watching this live, of course, visit mlti.me and click the SLAM exam link at the top to enter your answer. You can only enter yeah, sure. one anytime before next week's show. And the passcode for this episode is 835. The SLAM exam question is, which feature adjusts the range of brightness from lightest to darkest in an image? Is it contrast, vignette, or crop? And we will announce the winner randomly select from all correct answers next episode. So good luck. Now, a quick note, the SLAM team will be headed to Benton Elementary tomorrow for another SLAM showcase. So be on the lookout for highlights, interviews, and student work from the event. Now, thank you, everyone, for joining today's MLTI SLAM show. Thanks again to our presenter, Alex Grant, our moderator, Owen, and director, Aiden. Now, Slammers, if you have questions, would like to make comments, or share the work you created today on the show, visit www.mlti.me and contact us. Those of you here in the live stream right now, stick around for the after show live discussion. Student Leadership Ambassador, stay curious. We'll see you next time. The MLTI SLAM Show is a program of the Maine Department of Education. For more information about this and other innovative educational initiatives, please visit www.maine.gov/doe.